A warm welcome to all members and friends. Thank you for joining our English pre-recorded worship service. Call to worship. Arise, shine for your light has come. We are called out of our darkness into light. Lift up your eyes and look around. We rejoice in the gift of light. Come, let us worship the God of light and joy and peace. Together, we, we come, come to, to kneel, kneel at, at the, the cradle, cradle of the babe, the, the light incarnate. incarnate. Morning Church, welcome to 2021. Uh, to start this time of praise and worship, the many changes around us, let us continue to focus and look to our God of ages. God of ages, bring in glory here. You are good, you are good. Above the earth, 
尘嚣嚣，我把夜送。Able, please remain standing as we continue our worship in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you created us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until we find rest in you. O sovereign God, we adore you, for your name is love, your nature is compassion, your presence is joy. Your word is truth, and your holiness is beauty, and your will is peace. O Lord, yes, unto you 
be all honor and glory. Yes, Abba Father, thank you for your great love and blessing over our lives. We thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. Thank you for opening the right doors and closing the wrong doors for us and our loved ones in 2020. We thank you for your protection in 2020. Prince of Peace, the pandemic has caused ever more fear, anxieties, and even distrust among leaders of nations. It has divided the people of the world. As we march into the new year, into 2021, may you deliver us from all this chaos. May you open our eyes so that we may turn from darkness to light and open our ears to hear your voice. Give us the confidence to trust that God, you are our rock, our refuge. Enable us to be more perfectly doing the work to which you have called us. Transform our lives, Lord, for your glory. O merciful God, we commit our church, Fuchang Methodist Church, before you. You have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. We pray, we pray for unity amongst your people. May you guide your community from falling into the world. May the community of faith grow in grace, build in love, and increase in faith, grace, and love. Eternal God, may you guard our hearts and minds in you today as we meditate on your word and truth. May we see the truth steadily, follow the light faithfully. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, as children of God, let us sing the Lord's Prayer. Good morning, Church. Today's scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 17. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. 
so his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling, Ananias, yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, Go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him, so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem, and he is authorized by the leading priests to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as the people of Israel, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2 And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Meet us right now in your word, because we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Transforming. Life change. What desire do we bring to God as we welcome a new year? I hope it will be this. A desire to be further transformed as we walk and grow in our discipleship with Jesus Christ. A prayer to know God, to experience Him, and certainly during this time, to be used by God as a channel of His blessing to others. A transformed life by God's grace. This is FMC 125. It's a five-year plan. 2021 is year four. The word to remember is transforming. This word expresses and reminds us of the ongoing work of grace in our lives. Transformation as we practice holy habits. Transformation when God's love is shared in our families. In mid-January, the Sunday sermons will look at how God has provided us the means to receive His grace, the five means of grace. To help the small group sessions, there will be six Saturday 4 p.m. Zoom sessions for the leaders. So let's speak about transformation of our lives. I am changed when 1. My thinking is changed. 2. When I meet God. and 3. When I obey God. When my thinking is changed. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 2. Paul wrote to the believers in Rome about life change. It was not a passive one-way movement, Paul said. The believer doesn't stand before God and say, change me, and then sit and wait for some lightning to come down from heaven, or perhaps some serum injection that will transform that 
skinny comic book character Steve Rogers into superhuman Captain America. That's not how change occurs. Paul says, you need intentional effort and discipline to do that. Romans 12, verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Believers play a part in their transformation. Paul appeals to the will. A choice can and has to be made. To be a living and holy sacrifice. Those involved in deliberate actions. And all this, by the way, is approved by God. You have to live in the way that God has made clear to you. Paul had already explained and given the many reasons why this effort is expected of the believer. Everything said in chapters 1 to 11 gave the motivation, the push for this particular action. So when I sing, change my heart, O God, make it ever true, what am I doing about my bad habits? I know what needs to be looked at. I know what holds me back from spending more time with Jesus. What relationship draws me away from the church? Therefore, am I making the decisions to remove the roadblocks to a deeper work of God in my life? Verse 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul's plea to the believers, let God transform you. Lest we think it's all human effort, Paul states it is God's work. The Holy Spirit work within you. Now that's a phrase and a reminder that is said at every baptism. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the second portion of verse 18. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Change the way you think. The world fashions and molds us. But as children of God, we live for God and not for ourselves. I need to stop and say, no. I need to be on guard. And it all begins with changing the way I think. I want to be more like Jesus. Holy Spirit, change the way I think. Second reflection. Transformation occurs when I meet God. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 9. Before Apostle Paul, there was Saul. Saul was the number one enemy of the Christian church. And what a reputation he had. When the church faced her first persecution in Jerusalem, we read of Saul approving of Stephen's death by stoning. Then, in Acts chapter 8, verse 3, we are told that, the spirit, that Saul sought to destroy the church. His actions were likened to that of a wild beast tearing at raw flesh. Saul went from house to house, dragging believers into prison. Saul was a persecutor. He was an arresting officer. And it took six days to travel between Damascus and Jerusalem. And he was making that trip to do just that. And then he met Jesus. Verse 3. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. 
He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Verse 5, Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The light was intense, brighter than midday sun, but it was the but that impact was nothing compared to the message that followed. Saul had persecuted the church for believing that Jesus was alive, that Jesus was resurrected. Now, that voice identified himself as Jesus. Saul had gotten it all wrong. He had been persecuting the risen Lord. Years later, he acknowledged that he had seen Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1. Am I not as free as anyone else? Am I not an apostle? Haven't I seen Jesus, our Lord, with my own eyes? Isn't it because of my work that you belong to the Lord? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 8. And last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. That truth broke Saul. Blinded, he had to be led to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. We do not know what went through his mind. We know, however, that he came out of it a changed man. His life was changed. You need to meet Jesus if you want a life change. Lord Jesus, come reign in my life. Correct me so that you will be first in my life. Third reflection. Transformation takes place when I obey God. Acts chapter 9 verses 10 to 17. There was a second change recorded, a second life change recorded in our text. This has to do with a believer named Ananias. God had called him into service. Verse 11, the Lord said, Go over to Straight Street, to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is staying, uh, he is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming up, uh, coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. God had plans for Saul, but he knew that Saul had questions. So God now drafts a willing believer into service. Ananias was going to do something bold and dangerous. I'm sure never in Ananias' dreams would he expect such a fearful direction from God. But we are not to be worried about the task that God has called us to. Instead, we are to remember that it is God who has called us to the task. Verse 13, But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I have heard many people talk about this, uh, talk about terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. Verse 14, and he is authorized by the leading priests to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. Saul's reputation had preceded him. Don't you know what kind of person you're asking me to talk to? Am I not in mortal danger and harm? Do you really want to obey or uh, to get me to obey you on this? Verse 15, But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as to the people of Israel, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me 
so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. When was Ananias' life changed? When he accepted in faith God's direction to go meet Saul. There was no reply to Ananias' fear of harm. Instead, Ananias was expected to believe and to accept the role that God had for him. My life will be transformed when I resist my fears and place my trust in the God who called me. Ananias feared but obeyed, and in doing so, he was used by God in changing Saul to the person we now call Apostle Paul. Loving God, I want to be your obedient child. So let me conclude. Holy Spirit, transform me, change my thinking. Lord Jesus, correct me, be first in my life. Loving God, challenge me, I trust you, my life. In the weeks that follow, we will look at the five habits that will change our lives. We will discuss it in, your, in our small groups. We will be challenged from the pulpit. May God grant us all 2021 a year of transformation. Let's pray. Father God, we just come before you asking that as we come before 2021, as we begin 2021, you will remind us of the need to be close to you. Holy Spirit, transform me. Change my thinking. There are many things which I don't think right before you. And we want to pray that your word will teach us, will point us to the errors in our thinking. Lord Jesus, reign in my life. Correct me, because many times, what I claim is not happening. But I, as I look towards this new year, want you to be first in my life. Loving God, challenge us. Challenge me. Help us to trust you, your plans for us. We do have fears, we do have concerns, but remind us, Challenge us. Help us to be obedient to your declared will. All this because we want to be transformed people of God. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning. Welcome to our first Sunday service for the year 2021. If you are joining us for the first time, uh, we welcome you. And at the same time, uh, could you go to our uh, Facebook page to find out more about uh, Fu Chao Methodist Church? Uh, type in the words F O O C H O W M C, Fu Chao M C. We want to greet each other uh, as in our practice. So, can we all stand? Okay, can we all stand? Words have been changed, it's a new year. Can we all stand and turn to each other and say, The Lord be with you. And in reply, say, And also with you. The Lord be with you. And in reply, And also with you. Thank you. Please be seated. Now we're going to send this greeting to our fellow brothers and sisters. So right now, text the words, the Lord be with you. Okay? The Lord be with you. And if you are receiving this, reply and also with you. Give you some time for this.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Registration for Disciple 2. Uh, if you have uh, graduated from Disciple 1 Bible Study, I urge you to sign up uh, for this Disciple 2. Okay, registration closes uh, January 31. Another announcement. Registration for on-site service, 17th of January. 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 3 p.m. We will be having installation service for our leaders uh, at the 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. services. Registration for uh, this on-site service will begin today. Begins today at 5 p.m. and closes on the 10th of January midnight. Now, uh, can I just ask, uh, make this request of you? Register, okay? Register at, at once it's open at 5 p.m. Register, don't delay, okay? Uh, send in your registrations today. Don't wait for a reminder. Don't wait until the, the last day on the 10th of January, okay? Take the time, straight away register, okay? Children and caregivers, they also need to be registered. Seniors facing difficulty with online registration, please uh, get your family members to help you. Want to highlight again the special points, okay? First, the church gates will be open 20 minutes before the service. So let me repeat, uh, if you have registered or you are registering for 9 a.m., come at 8 40 onwards okay from 8 40 onwards if you are registering for the 11 a.m come from 10 40 onwards and of course if you are registering for the 3 p.m service come from 2 40 p.m the gates will be open then no vehicle parking is available uh, in the church premises and of course trace together whether the usage of the token or for the apps uh, they will be used so that uh, uh, for entry into the church final announcement um, the means of grace bible study training uh, this will be for the small group leaders uh, it's on saturday it's by zoom uh, 3 to 4 30 pm the dates are on the screen Details out next week. Let's prepare ourselves right now for our tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Father God, we return to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right now on the screen are the giving methods. So as usual, can you please scan the QR code. Scan the QR code. Uh, if you are sending a check for your tax and offerings, contact Wendy. I'll give you some time now. Can we stand for the doxology?
still be my vision, O ruler of all. Go forth. Be a transformed people. Receive the benediction. So now the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you today and the days that follow. Amen. Service is now over. Thank you for joining us. See you next Sunday.